Hi there. If you're on the fence as to whether investing passively in real estate is the right move for you, this is video number two of two on this subject. So if you didn't catch the first one, make sure you search my channel and watch that video as well. Hey, I'm Greg Butcher of Blue Sky Equity Partners. In this video, I'm going to walk you through the second set of five of the 10 things you should consider when deciding whether to be an active or a passive real estate investor. So maybe you're curious about being a landlord or you'd like to try your hand at flipping a property or you're still in the early research phase of getting started in real estate investing. I totally get it. There are a lot of things to think about and deciding how best to invest your money can be a tough decision. Ready to learn what might sway you one way or the other? Okay, let's go. Now remember, this is video number two of two with five things in each video that might help you decide whether to become more of a landlord or more of a passive investor. So today, we're starting with number six, and that is risk and liability. Things are fine and dandy when tenants are happy and your property is doing well, but what about when unexpected things pop up? With an active real estate investment, depending on how you structure it, you could be held personally liable when something goes wrong. And if you invest in your own name, your tenants could come after your personal assets in the event of a lawsuit. So it's important to take steps to protect yourself and your assets. With a passive real estate investment, your liability is limited. You're investing in an LLC or a limited partnership that holds the real estate asset. So your stake in it is limited to the amount you invest. In the worst case scenario, you would lose your original investment, but your other assets would not be in jeopardy. Number seven, paperwork. As an active real estate investor, you should be prepared for a lot of paperwork, both during the acquisition of the property and throughout the life cycle of the project, such as the bookkeeping, reports, and legal documents that have to be maintained. As a passive real estate investor, you sign one set of documents up front, then receive monthly email updates and financial reports and an annual tax statement. And that's it. Number eight is the team. As an active real estate investor, you typically put together your own team. You choose the broker, the property manager, and contractors you want to work with. As a passive real estate investor, you invest in a team that's already put together. The sponsor team will all have already identified the broker and property managers they want to work with. So you leverage their shared expertise. Number nine, diversification. This is one area where I think being a passive investor really gives you the upper hand. Because passive investing doesn't take as much of your time, nor do you need to be hands-on. You can invest your money in more assets. Further, those assets don't have to be local as you are leveraging the expertise of teams on the ground in each target market. As an active investor, you must be an expert in whatever asset class and market you're investing in, which takes time and energy. So your ability to diversify into multiple markets and multiple asset types will be limited. Number 10, impact. On the impact front, you should consider whether you wanna have a broad or a deep impact. As a passive real estate investor, because you're able to invest in more projects, not to mention larger ones, your money goes farther and has the potential to impact more people, families, and communities. However, your direct contact with those tenants is limited. And the amount of impact you have on the residents and the communities you invest in depends more on the sponsors you're invested with and how they choose to do business. As an active real estate investor, you can have a deeper relationship with your tenants if that's what you desire. And no matter the depth of the relationship, you truly have an opportunity to give back by making a community one that people really want to live in, fostering a sense of community and holding community appreciation events, like maybe a pool party, a school supply drive, a raffling off of a, a full Thanksgiving family meal or something like that. We even know one sponsorship company that's making courses and coaching and financial literacy available to the residents. As we round out this video, consider the vast real estate investing spectrum. It's not one way or the other. There are lots of ways to invest in real estate and levels of involvement. If you're ready to roll up your sleeves and manage your own fix and flip like an HGTV pro, you're likely on the active end of the spectrum. If you're strapped for time and just want to put your money into an investment with stronger and more reliable performance than the stock market, well, you're probably on the passive end of the spectrum. Tell you what, drop a comment below and tell me which seats you best. What other questions do you have, either about us or passive versus active real estate investing? Don't forget to go back and watch video number one if you missed that one, and if you're still attempting to explore your real estate investing options. Meanwhile, if you're interested to learn more about the passive style investments that I love, click the link in the description below to apply to join the Blue Sky Investor Club. Inside, you'll learn more about real estate syndications and how they can help you achieve and sustain financial freedom so you can live life on your own terms. Last but not least, help others find this video by giving it a thumbs up below. Want to hear more about syndications? Make sure you subscribe to my channel. 
Feel free to share it with a friend while you're at it. I'm Greg Butcher of Blue Sky Equity Partners. Thanks so much for watching.